Joining me now is medical doctor Tuyeme Bawadu. Good morning, doctor. Welcome to TVC Breakfast this Good morning. morning. Uh, it's, it's a reality that, that uh, we've had to live with in Nigeria when you talk about orthodox medicine and traditional uh, medicine as well. Well, again, the reality um, comes out from the fact that we're having challenge with our human resources for health. We're having challenge with actually defining the role of every part of the healthcare system in the whole spectrum of healthcare. Now, um, this is what I mean. I will create a scenario. Yes, we started with traditional medicine, and rightly, maybe rightly so because it was cheaper, it was accessible to the people, and it was affordable, and can relate to the people's culture and context. But we moved on from then. And the critical question I want to ask is this. We should, first of all, we should be very careful in creating dual system of health system. Mm. A health system for the poor <coughs> and the rural people, and another health system for the rich uh, and the urban people. Now, if you have a situation whereby you, the hospitals are working perfectly, the health system is functioning, I mean the orthodox health system is functioning, and then the traditional health system is also in, on the maximum, where will you take your wife for delivery? There are, there's definitely there, there are roles for traditional health care practitioner. But to start, you know, bringing them as the real alternative or the real standard is a huge, huge problem. But let me interrupt, though, because uh, there's also the issue of trado medicine or traditional medicine is also, also offers a... Uh, originality. Many have said so. We're looking at uh, the average paracetamol and all that. Many would say who favor uh, the trado option would say uh, we're getting this, this, this herbal mixtures now. This is the original uh, content unlike the, the, the processed ones. Kemi, the fact is this. It, that something is natural does not mean it will have side, it will have side effects. In terms of usage, uh, overdose? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, some leaves you take them, you'll be in trouble. Obviously. So, I mean, nobody can now push tra uh, naturality, traditionalism as being originality and without side effect. It doesn't happen that way. And then, if you look at the concept of traditional medicine, it's completely at variance because one, divination, spiritualism, and herbalism. These are key issues. But this all, this, is this all the time? Is it, this scenarios of play? Invariably, that is what is called traditional medicine. medicine. Now, the qu first question is that. Can I have overdose of incantation, for instance? Can there be overdose of incantation? We're not, there's the quality and safety profile, we're not discussing it. The orthodox medicine has moved on with a lot of research, which is still absent in the traditional medicine. But, but would that be fair, uh, Dr. Mibaudu, in, in the breakthroughs that we've seen, we've seen the rise and rise of trado medicine, we've seen the big names now who swear that, okay, they also go through refining, they also go through research. Uh, the, the, all these things are, are right there. People can prove and test. Now, I, I, I don't think the, the discussion will get to the point of convergence, except we have a thorough thinking about it. Because the simple thing is that if you look at the causation of diseases, the agents for causation of diseases, in traditional medicine, sorcery, ancestral cause, you know, spirit, and witchcraft. But in, our own, in, in the orthodox one, we're saying that there's an agent there's a host, there's environment interacting in a complex way to cause diseases. And then in some when you have an acute disease, let's say for instance, an acute heart attack or an acute massive bleeding, in that wise, you won't start applying trado medicine. There are points where you have to then give the real orthodox medicine. But when we are managing a chronic illness, there could be a place for trado medicine. When we need to ensure access to proper health care at the rural area, there could be a place for the trado, to trado people. Under our present situation. But, yes, but again, the, the key issue is for us to understand where, on, where is their limits? What are the standards? What are the controls? How do you manage side effects? And that from and what your are end the research? is lacking. Yeah, it's it's not, what are the research in all these things? How do we, you know, elevate it? We've seen what science and proper thinking and and proper process have done to us, not only in medicine, but only in technology and even advancing movement. But how do I now explain sorcery, divination, incantation, uh, scarification? What, what are they given, given, given to us in the past 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 years? We, we, we must be able to move away from serious discussion if we're going to deal with issues regarding our health. Because now, if you say that you need to do exorcism for me, 
which again becomes so so All so right. nebulous. Doctor Tui, yes. Meba me Odu, we appreciate your uh, views uh, on on this uh, subject. Thank you very much. Joining me now is a medical doctor, Tui Meba Odu. It's nice to have you join me right now. Thank you, Mike. Now uh, we in the twenty first century, especially for African countries, Nigeria inclusive, we still have. In as much as we're talking about building the biggest hospitals, the, the largest equipment, the best of equipment from across the world, we still have people who prefer to, uh, you know, allow or to, to patronize tradal medicine and, and those who practice uh, that aspect of medicine. But if we look at the chain, what is the place of tradal medicine and traditional birth attendants and all of them in that, in that class? Again, um the truth is that we cannot just discontinence and throw out tradu medicine and say, mm -hmm. no, you know, you don't have use. Um, what we are seeing, the, the, the traction, the high movement of people from, especially at the rural level, mm -hmm. to the tradu medical people is because of the failed health system. Okay? Now, we need to be able to synchronize and see and define roles for traditional medicine, the whole scheme of healthcare system. Now, don't let us forget the fact that the, 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 the phytochemicals, you know, were derived from plants and used even in orthodox medicine to synthesize drugs. That is there. But we know that even in traditional medicine, it's not about plants alone. You know, some of them use animal parts. They use some minerals. They, add, they concoct those things, and they have to say a lot of words, you know, into those things to make it effective in their own way. The challenge is this. What, is, what standard are we creating? What is our quality control? How do we assure side effects? Can it be repeated by so many people that are not even, you know, um, so to say, uh, traditional thing in that way? Now, even the plants we are using, let's agree that there has been an evolution of diseases over a long period of time. You can't take that away that we've seen evolution of diseases. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that even the plant we are using, the soil content, the seasons affect the constituents of those plants, as it were. We're, there are no research to look at those things in details. And I agree that to a large extent in the rural area, we need to be able to involve them in, you know, for instance, if you want to deploy vaccines, if you want to manage chronic illness, for instance, after an intervention, say, you know, cardiac problem, mm. and then you now want to see in terms of nutrition, in terms of mm. lifestyle, how to take those people back to the rural community and ensure proper management. But we must be able to create that platform, and that platform requires a thorough discussion. All right, it's but, but in, in, in looking at that thorough discussion, in what ways do these complement each other? Are there ways they, you know, they come together, or are there ways they're part of? How do they complement each other, really? Again, at the, at the level of belief system of the person, mm. at the level of pushing the effectiveness, mm. Because there's a difference between efficacy and effectiveness. Okay. If a drug is efficacious, it can deal, or even a system is efficacious, it can deal with that thing, deal with that illness promptly. Mm. But effectiveness means that you must be able to deploy it to have that effect. That, yeah. That's a huge gap. Okay, okay that's a different Th thing. That, that talks about the issue uh, of structuring. Uh, and structure, and structure, and the environment, okay. and the people. So mm. if you want to drive effectiveness of anything, the role of tradu medical people becomes so important. But if you now want to s use them to replace a proper scientific thinking, then they must be able to embrace scientific discussion. A discussion that can be transparent, open, and not hidden. And verifiable. And verifiable, and not hidden in secrecy. We cannot get stuck in, 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 our, in our cultural, we cannot get ossified in our cultural thinking. We cannot be attached to zombie orthodoxies, even in healthcare. All right, we, we, the, we, the, 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 there's an, a specific area that uh, Nigerians feel or Africans feel that tra tradu um, approach is better. That has to do with the issue of bones and, and, you know, uh, and so on. A lot of people, when they have accidents or have issues, instead of going to the hospitals where they, they, they plaster up Paris and all of that, they prefer to go to the villages, so, you know, to be involved in all of that. Have you, have you considered that effectiveness from that aspect of things? Mike, or maybe you, efficacy? If you look at papers, mm. papers, read documented scientific papers on the harm those things have done to people, you'll mm. be amazed. Because breaking bones is a complex thing. It could be, there could be a complex fracture, okay. you know, which require even internal fixation. Mm. Now, if it's, a simple, if it's a simple fracture, yes, after you might have applied 
the medical thing, then we can then send them to try the medical okay. and say that, listen, this is the what you can use to help this people further. And then let us have a way of interaction and understanding okay. ourselves. Right. Okay. It is not actually, you know, a, a quarrel or a fight or even trying to be a face off between it's not a face the two sides. <laughs> but we must be able to see synergy. How do we relate to ourselves? All right. But we must subject it to proper thinking. We can't be stuck with our superstition, you know, and ignorance <laughs> in the 21st century. No. All right. Dr. Tui Mebaondo, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Right. Joining us now is medical doctor Tui Mebaondu. You're welcome, doctor, to the program. And talking about, um, you know, solving these gaps now in maternal health, for example, in Nigeria. Uh, how about Trado and the modern day, you know, medicine? How about a partnership? Uh, what, how much ground have we covered in that area? Again, we should really explore that partnership uh, because let's face it, the Trado people are in the rural area. They level, quite a lot of people believe in them, believe and act and, uh, and workability is not a different thing. They believe in them and they want to practice them. They really find it difficult to extricate themselves from their original, you know, uh, thought pattern. Now, this is what is possible. We won't be able to be able to do triaging um, because if at the rural level we have those tribal people and they're working, they must have close interaction and contact with the orthodox people who can identify uh, early signals of dangers and be able to then interfere, interfere as, as it were. In addition, um, the, the maternal child, maternal child well-being is not about delivery alone. There are a lot of components to that. Family planning, child nutrition, and all those stuff. Postnatal post and, and all that. Now, you can employ them, they can really be employed in actually dealing with those issues. How to ensure that, look at family plan penetration in Nigeria, collective penetration in Nigeria, mm -hmm. it's just about 10-20%. Uh, we can, at the rural level, we can use it to the medical people to then um, enhance mm -hmm. that. Now, um, the discussion needs to be opened up, the narration needs to be opened up on different areas of collaboration to enhance the health of the people. But they must be ready to embrace critical scientific thinking in deploying their skill. If they are not well, doing that, isn't that... Isn't that the most challenging part? Because the point there is that the, the, in as much as they want to, they would like to better their trade, if I have to put it that way, the knowledge and the access to doing all of those, because you're talking about bringing science into it, you're talking about bringing digital, you're talking about bring, bringing uh, uh, um, a computer, computerization and all of those into the system. Whether we add technology or not, when you want to upgrade in that knowledge, certainly do they have what it takes to accepting the uh, opening up what their forefathers had given them and what they think uh, is what God has handed over to them. Uh, to the concept of uh, science and technology and new medicine. Mike, your forefather gave you how to kill twins, if I'm not, you know, but you're not doing that again. We must be able to move everything, undergo changes. If you need to be a child of medicine, you need to do it properly, so that this thing can then be embraced, not just in Nigeria, mm. also in other parts of the world. You know, because what happened to that of China and India was that kind of upgrade, a quality control, a thorough, uh, you know, uh, um, understanding of the process, how the thing works. That's mm. why it can be repeated. In, in this idea of structuring and, and upgrade, where should the push come from? Is it from the government who wants to sanitize the system? Absolutely. Or it is, it is from the tribal people who wants to upgrade? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Government must be able to create standards. Okay. okay? But the there is an institution, uh, sort of, sorry for the interruption, like the Federal College of Complementary Alternative uh, Medicine now, that that should be for training of you know, tribal medical practitioners. Are there still gaps even with that. Me, if you have to train people, even let's look at the herbal, herbal, herbal medicine, you know, uh, you know, herbalism as it were, you know, using fruits and all that to cure diseases. You know, it gets to a point where you must have the requisite knowledge to absorb critical information. You can't then pick my grandmother or teach. my grandfather, you know, from where they are, or my or village woman there. I'm going to put him in one institution and say, okay, I'm training you. How many? No, in fact, what level of comprehension will be available to that person? No, no, in their home language. Hello. <laughs> in your home language, how do you now start describing chemicals, interactions? In how do you start? Because at the level of those China, when you look at, at India, when you look at their products, 
you see that kind of description coming mm -hmm. okay. into those things. That's why we can embrace it. Right. If we want to partake as Africans in this big business, in this big field coming and want to enhance the health of our people, we need to move from those superstitions, from right. those incantations, from those divinations. We need to move to area of clear cut understanding, you know, of what we need to do, mm -hmm. how we need to do it, and how to cooperate with the other health system. All right, now, now that the UN, UN has some level of recognition Absolutely. for traditional World medicine, exactly, yeah, and all of that, what should Nigeria begin to do now? If, if you talked about the issue of structuring and standardization and all of that. What is the practical approach to the, if we have to lay hands on the specifics of what uh, steps should be taken? Again, the first thing is for us to define the limits okay. of traditional intervention right. in our healthcare system. Mm -hmm. We can't just throw it open, okay, and say that, you say, go and do anything you like, go and appease the gods, go and sacrifice this and that. We can't just throw it open. At that level, because it becomes very contentious and issues that raise a lot of emotion when you are discussing this. So, first of all, where can you go and no further? That must be defined. Limits. Sec yeah, there must be limits of what you can do. And then secondly, there must be an entire, you know, a kind of committee to interface between tradition now and orthodox, orthodox medicine and then at the level of NAVDA because if you look at NAVDA in phytochemicals they've not had sufficient training to be able to define whether this thing is working or not they just register them we need to look at those kind of organizations to structure how so it's one to, thing to even check. register put labels yes it's not, you have to check these things whether it's working then we must be able to look at the process of monitoring this, this um, chemicals or drugs on human body. You, for, before a panadol or paracetamol can be used by a human being, it went through minimum of five stages, preclinical, you know, um, phase one, two, three, four, and five testing. You saw the Ebola drugs mm. now. Mm. That's phase four testing. It's just going to go to that phase five. five. So, final. you know, that is the thoroughness. Okay. We must be able to apply Subject. to try to do medical thing right. if it's going to serve the purpose in health. We should be careful in prescribing one health system for the rural people and another health system for the urban people. All right. And we, we have to be now. careful for sticking to our cultural ossification and zombie orthodoxies. We can't <laughs> continue like that. All right. <laughs> Dr. Tui Mibaundu, thank you so much for uh, your insight into all of this. Thank you very much. And